With 1.2 million residents, Dublin, Ireland is one of the smallest cities in Europe. However, with over 11 million visitors and more than 21 million passengers flying through the city's airport every year, it is also one of the busiest. Currently, there is no inner city metro system in Dublin, and the Irish government is planning to rectify that problem with the Metro Link. Since 2001, Ireland has been working on a plan for the Metrolink, a mostly underground rail system that will connect all major points of the city of Dublin and the airport, essentially changing the way local residents and tourists move about the capital. But although they've been discussing and planning this metro system for two decades, Ireland still hasn't broken ground on the epic project. Initially back in the early 2000s, the government estimated that this immense and incredible metro system would cost $3.2 billion, but as of 2022, they now assume that it will cost more than $10.5 billion to complete. But interestingly, it was not the giant price tag that was delaying the Metro Link in Dublin. It was the ever-changing route and design plans. But finally, just last year, they announced that the current design has been approved. Construction will commence in 2025 and passengers will be able to use the convenient transport by 2035. The long-standing idea for Metrolink was to provide not only transport to and from the airport, but also an easy-to-use commuter rail within the city itself. Originally, the system was meant to have three major lines to move passengers through the city. However, in 2018, the National Transport Authority announced that the plan they had been working on for over a decade was changing drastically. The new proposal includes four routes – Estuary, Seatown, Sword Central and Fosterstown, Dublin Airport, Dardistown, Northwood and Ballymun, Collins Avenue, Griffith Park, Glasnevin and Mater, and finally O'Connell Street, Tara Street, St. Stephen's Green and Charlemont. It will link all major transportation clubs including the Mater Hospital, Rotunda Hospital, Dublin City University and Trinity College Dublin, as well as a connection at Tara Street. The new and improved plan offers residents and visitors a quick 25-minute ride from the outskirts of the city to its centre and only 20 minutes to the downtown from the Dublin airport. The trains will leave every three minutes at first and eventually every 90 seconds, transporting over 20,000 passengers in each direction every hour. The official Metrolink organisation claims that more than 53 million passengers will use the system every year, which will not only make travel faster and easier, but also cut down on traffic and fossil fuel emissions. It's important to note that while Metrolink is undoubtedly a ginormous undertaking, the project itself hasn't faced a wide variety of challenges like other monumental construction projects have. Realistically, the only issue has been finalizing the route of the proposed Metro Link, including how it connects to the existing public transportation systems. In 2006, Eamon Ryan, now Minister of Transportation, proposed that one section be extended south to Beechwood, where it would link directly to the existing Lewis Green Line. The idea would allow passengers to travel without having to change lines from the very south to the very north of the city. However, other members of the NTA had issues with that plan, and as of 2019, they still hadn't decided. But the organization did announce that the Green Line phase wouldn't be finalized until after phase one was complete. This is just one example of the many small but important decisions that needed to be made in regard to the roots of Metrolink. As with any major project, there were arguments for both sides, and the NTA really struggled to make the decisions necessary to finalize even part of the vast plan. In fact, it took more than 20 years to finalize the design plan for the first phase, but finally last year it was approved and Atkins Island has been appointed as the design team. Atkins' managing director, Martina Finn, told the press, this appointment builds on our existing role as operations advisor for Metrolink, and we're pleased to bring our local teams of experts and global experience in transportation to support Transport Infrastructure Ireland as they progress this exciting project. Finn and the team at Atkins not only developed the design for a program of activity, but also utility diversions, environmental studies, facilitation of land, and even archaeological assessments along the now-approved route. So it seems that with the plan approved and a team in place, it may be smooth sailing for Metrolink. That being said, there are certainly some elements of the design plan that, once begun, could slow down the construction process significantly, or, as usual, increase the estimated price tag. With its new plan approved in 2022, the National Transport Authority decided, in order to combat the possibility of an elongated or expensive build, to opt for a single-bore tunnel as opposed to a twin-bore. 
Essentially, that means that instead of digging out two parallel tunnels for a single rail track, they will build one tunnel large enough for trains travelling in either direction to pass. The NTA's new plan also uses driverless trains and implements much simpler platforms and stations at each stop in order to cut down on costs and disruption during the build. And finally, along with the several improved aspects to the design and build, the NTA also explained that the construction of Metrolink will happen in phases with the major line running from Swords to Charlemont to be their first priority. Then Phase 2 will include the Green Line which, according to the NTA, still has some kinks to work out, such as pedestrian and cyclist use along the line and even where the line will stop. But it seems by all accounts that the NTA and the Government of Ireland have a great understanding of their design, possible engineering issues, and even the cost of this vast and important project. With after 20 years of working on it, it's certainly good news. Finally, the NTA announced in July 2022 that construction will start in 2025, and the first phase should be completed by 2035. They hope that the entire Metrolink system will be finished and fully operational by 2050. Although the NTA and Ireland's government seem to have a handle on the design and planning, the truth is that almost every construction project of this magnitude ends up going over budget. In the early 2000s, when this project was first proposed, they estimated that it would cost just over $3 billion to complete. As of March 2021, that figure had risen to almost $10.5 billion. And while $10.5 billion is still the official budget, some experts say that it could cost as much as $24.9 billion in the end. At this time, the Irish government plans to pay for up to 75% of the Metrolink and raise the other 25% of the funds needed from private investors. Though if the cost more than doubles, as some think it might, it's highly likely that the NTA will need a great deal more from investors than they already have. However, it's important to note that the Irish government, as well as the existing and potential investors, see Metrolink as worth every penny, as they believe it will change the infrastructure of Ireland as a whole. Locally, Metrolink will connect 127 schools, higher learning institutions, and five hospitals. It will also encourage 146 million cycling trips, divert up to 360 million car trips, and provide 1 billion fully electrified carbon-neutral trips for Irish citizens and tourists. The NTA claims that Metrolink will offer enhanced regional and international connectivity, as it will integrate with the existing transport system throughout the country, including bus connects, Luas, Dart, and of course Dublin Airport. But that's not all. During construction, the Metrolink project will create over 8,000 jobs every year, including an additional 3,750 indirect support jobs. With at least a decade of construction on the horizon, this could mean jobs for tens of thousands of Irish residents. While the idea of improving the lives of citizens and visitors of Dublin and Ireland is important, one of the other crucial aspects of the Metrolink rail system is that it will be 100% electric with zero emissions. With the climate change problem intensifying every day, countries around the world are doing their best to reduce fossil fuel use and carbon emissions, and even the small country of Ireland has realised that they can and need to do the same. NTA Chief Executive Officer Anne Graham explained, As far as NTA is concerned, the single biggest step that can be taken to tackle climate change is to encourage as many people as possible to use public transport and other sustainable modes, rather than the private car. Graham also told the media that in addition to the zero emission Metrolink, the NTA also plans to invest in making all of Ireland's transport, including Dart and Luas, fully electric in the coming years. She said, we in the NTA want to play our part, and we want to lead by example, and we will do that by transitioning our public transport fleet away from fossil fuel to low and zero emission technologies. Ireland is actually one of the only countries in Europe not to have an existing commuter rail within its capital city. However, not every other major train system is completely electric. Although these projects are huge undertakings, if Metrolink is successful, efficient, and stays within budget, there may just be a continent-wide transition to all electric trains in the very near future. Metrolink's 12-mile tracks will undoubtedly change Dublin and Ireland forever. NTA Minister Eamon Ryan explained, 
Metrolink is a once-in-a-generation project that's going to massively transform the public transport system in our capital city. And he also said that while plans have been in the works for more than two decades, the approval last July is a significant milestone. And now this exciting transport mega project starts to become a reality. We are giving the green light to a transport system that will be integral to the city and the country's sustainable development in this century and into the next. Of course, construction still hasn't started yet and Dublin residents are still patiently waiting, 20 years later, for the promised life-changing metro in their beloved city. However, if things go as planned, the NTA and the Government of Ireland will officially break ground in less than two years. And if they can pull this project off, they will absolutely change the lives of the citizens of Dublin, Ireland, and maybe even the world. Excited for more construction wonders? Click the video on your screen to unravel how Texas is constructing USA's fastest train in the heart of the South. See you there.